boom. Back here in the locker room, Jay Burr with you coming at you here for the Wolves Den. Throw it up, guys. That's the magic of television. Uh, theoretically, my name and all, there it is, there it is. All right, make sure you get at me, uh, at DJ Burr on the Twitter machine. I like to tweet, uh, so please feel free to get at me. It's a big week, too, for Arkansas State, especially on the men's side of things. We'll get to all that here in just a minute, but let's look back at the week previous, because um, it, uh, it was a rough week. Uh, unfortunately, this is not the time of year to be doing these things. They got Carolina swept, hosted both these games, actually. So a little surprising on that end, too, that they, they actually lost both of these at home. Close games, though. Um, so as we've been kind of talking these past couple of weeks, that this team is oddly winning, despite what the numbers say, I think we saw a little bit of regression to the mean. And kind of what I mean by that is, they, they've been winning despite those stats, but now those stats kind of catching up a little bit, and now they're catching some L's here. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some of these highlights this past week. Uh, I took out App State on uh, Thursday night, and, uh, yeah, you know, it's just one of those games, and we even talked about it last week, where this was a game that we were going to be interested to see sort of how things pan out. App State tends to be a little bit of a thorn in the side, as, as does Coastal Carolina, but... It was a competitive game, very back and forth. It's not like either team really got ahead in this one. Uh, the one thing that really did kill Arkansas State was Justin Forrest. He put up 26 in this one. And, and again, it was just one of those games where just neither team could really build a lot of momentum, really get any kind of, of significant lead. I, I want to say the biggest lead at one point, I have to go back and check here, was – you know, maybe five or six, at least there until the very end when, when things kind of got away. But, again, one of these things, uh, you know, Arkansas State shot the ball okay. Hit it from the three, three land, hit their free throws for the most part. I, I know I've been critical of the free throws here the past couple of weeks. Uh, just one of those games here. In fact, you look at these numbers statistically, you know, as a team, both these teams pretty even. Appstock. 40, or uh, excuse me, 50%. Arkansas State shot 40. Both uh, hitting eight three-pointers. Free throws were about dead even in terms of the, the number made. 15 for App, 16 for Arkansas State. So, you know, again, you look at these the stats and they're fairly even. But what it came down to really here is, and this is me obviously oversimplifying things, is uh, Appalachia State made shots 24. Arkansas State made shots 20. So, uh, there you go. That was the, the difference in a, in a close game. Uh, there you go. You see uh, against Coastal Carolina, again, another one of these games where just kind of back and forth in this affair. Nobody really built up a lot of momentum. Uh, Coastal Carolina kind of flexed a little bit there in the first half as Arkansas State took them a while to sort of really get going into things. But it wasn't a, a significant lead of any kind. In fact, this is one of these games where you really wonder how in, on earth – the chance were even up at all in this game because they they didn't really come out hot either in this one. But uh, again, a little bit of a regression to the mean, if you will. And, and even this one, statistically, not the worst performance. I mean, the shooting could have been better. And, well, I take it back. The three-point shooting was pretty abysmal. Two for 16 in this one. And that's really the deal breaker in this one, especially when it was a six-point game. Uh, out of those 16, you hit four more of those. You go 6 of 16, that's the difference in the game right there. You got a 12-point difference. It's a totally different score right there. So uh, the, the three-point shooting really did Arkansas State in. Uh, and you could even say their free throw shooting, despite that make right there, kind of did them in. Went to the line whew, 54 times in this one. Yeah, that's absurd. But Sunbelt ref's going to Sunbelt ref. Uh, 39 of 54. So percentage-wise... Not too bad, 72%, but in terms of actual numbers made, you know, 39, you think, oh, man, 39 free throws. Chances are you're winning that game, but, you know, you look at Coach Bellotto there. He was hot. I was kind of feeling, feeling him there in that one, but uh, out of 54, got to hit a few more than that. So there's, there's your big difference right there. You hit a couple more threes, just literally a couple more threes. You hit a handful more free throws. Game's in your hand. And there you go. And, again, regression to – the mean. Uh, the shooting was okay overall in that game. I mean, 18 of 44, that puts them at 41%. Not bad, not great. And, and that's kind of what we've seen out of this team sort of in the totality of the year. They've been 
not bad, but they haven't been great. Uh, they've had flashes of both ends of this thing. So it's really hard, again, to really get a vibe on this team. I think what it, the product here is, it's a young team. And we've seen that. they got a couple of freshmen really leading the way. Melo Eggleston came in mid-year, probably still trying to kind of find his way a little bit. And he's been a little up and down uh, here as well. Uh, defensively, they, they've been giving up a lot of shots. They're getting to that free throw line. They did it in both these games. But, again, when you, when you miss the free ones, you know, you're not going to hit them all. But that 70% mark, you, you, <laughs> you'd really like to see it maybe closer to 80. And I, and I get it. It's college basketball. 70 is not that bad, actually. But when you just get a free shot, got to knock those down, especially at home. Two games at home. That, that, one, ugh, that one hits right there in the guts. Let's take a look at the updated standings because it tends to change things a little bit here. Little Rock still dominating this thing. They are definitely one of the surprises on the season. They're 11 and 2, 17 and 7 overall. Georgia State coming through at 8 and 4, and then things kind of even out a little bit. Texas State really making a run here. Look at the Bobcats, 7 and 5. Georgia Southern also sitting there at 7 and 5, and then Arkansas State at 7 and 6. So they're still in a pretty good position. You like to be in one of those top fours. That way you can kind of get those buys, double buys, all that fun stuff. But uh, considering all things right now, 15 and 9, not a bad record. 7 and 6, though, probably would like to be a little higher than that, obviously. Uh, but here we are. Let's go through the, uh, the rest of the standings. They're looking like this. Ah, there we are. App State's in at 500. Texas Arlington making a little bit of a run to uh, South Alabama, really a, a head scratcher in this conference. Uh, they were, again, I mean, we said this last week, one of the, uh, they were the preseason pick. And here they are at six and seven, right now the eight seed in this thing. So uh, some funky stuff going on there with those guys. Coastal Carolina, 12 and 11 overall, five and seven, seven and nine, and then Troy, five and eight. So not a whole, whole lot of separation from that, well, even the, the three seed all the way down to the 10. And then you've got the Louisianas uh, bringing up the rear UL, Sydney 4 and 8, ULM also still struggling on the year at 2 and 10 overall. There they are. There you see it for yourselves. Boom. Uh, so the Louisiana's kind of not been much of a factor so far this year, but uh, there you see it. But, uh, but again, saying, going back to what I was saying there about South Alabama, big time head scratcher. That, that's a team that was picked to win this thing. Struggling. So that, that does show you, though, how much really divides this conference from top to bottom. Right now, Little Rock really playing out of their minds right now. A lot of new guys being integrated into that team. Uh, they play good defense offensively. I don't want to say they're going to light you up, but they can. Uh, they're very chameleon-like uh, Little Rock Trojans. So they can kind of get you either way. They can grind out games. They can also get into track meets with you. And that's what's really made them dangerous this year is they can evolve their style of play. It's going to be real interesting because it is – officially hate week for Little Rock. Next game here, coming up Saturday, going to be at Little Rock, going to be at the Jack Stevens Center. This is usually one of their big time games here. So, uh, and again, kind of getting back to that matchup. It's going to be real interesting. Arkansas State is going to have to hit some shots because you got to hit shots to win. That, that Coastal Carolina game is definitely the one you want to sort of pinpoint as if you don't hit shots, that's what's going to happen. And that ended up being a close game going to lose those if you don't hit your shots, especially those three-point shots, and especially against this Little Rock team who's stingy on the defensive side. Now, again, like I said, offensively, they're not going to necessarily light you up because they, they're, they're gonna, they tend to be more of a grinded-out team. But as we saw earlier in the year, they, they could put up some big-time points. They did it against Texas Arlington. They get it, did it against Texas State. So these are, uh, this is a team that – this is the one you really got to want to win, not just for pride purposes, but you don't want to start falling – down the Sun Belt standings here because uh, this is when things start to really amp up a little bit, if you will. As we start to get into the tournament, we start talking about seedings and things like that. So it's going to be real interesting to see how this game works out. Saturday afternoon game here. Let me double check on the time here for you guys here. It's a 2 o'clock game right there. So uh, make sure if you're not, you got to, if all, the, all my alums down here, around the central Arkansas area. Get out to that one. I'm going to try to get out to that one as well. So uh, it's going to be fun here uh, for the guys. So uh, make sure you get out there for that one. It's going to be on ESPN Plus as well, the official Sunbelt Network. So again, 2 o'clock, Little Rock, let's go here. All right, let's switch things up here. Let's go to the latest side of things. Only one game for them this week. On the road against the Warhawks, 
you had to think, oh, this one's going to be a layup for them. ULM has not been very good this year. They're one of the worst teams really in the country uh, in terms of their record, in terms of all the statistics. And, of course, Arkansas State had to make this a tough game. Throw it up there for me, guys. Uh, you know, Matt Daniels, or Matt Daniels, excuse me, only one Daniel. Uh, this was one of those just, yeah, you kind of can't really pinpoint what the deal was. And again, we, we've said this about this women's team. They're, they're in their first year with them. Really kind of been hit and miss. It's a, it's a confusing team. But, you know, hey, you come away with a win. It was a very low scoring affair. Defenses were really showing out. And, you know, this is one of them games where Arkansas State had to come back in this one. We had, we've seen them do it before. We've seen them do it a couple times this year. And, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a head scratcher that you're down as much as they were to a team like ULM. But there you go, you see the last sequence here, scratch and clonger, right? Jaira Washington, Holly, spit it out there, guy. Hits one of those free throws, had a chance at two, and then Arkansas State holds on for the victory. So uh, it was a close win. I would say it's a big time win just because of the circumstances that they were dealing with in this one. But hey, wins are wins. Getting to the box score here, uh, obviously, uh, Peyton Martin really led the way in this one. She had 15 points in this one. Wallace also big time in this one. And then Jada Ford coming off the bench, getting 10 in there as well. Jarrell Washington shut down for the most part, and that's kind of where we saw this team struggle, especially there in that first half, 3 of 14 on the day. So it was a tough scene for, for Washington against the Warhawks, but hit the one that mattered, the game-winning free throw, and that was really just an incredible sequence there in the last minute or so of that one forced to turn over with about 19 seconds left had a chance for the last shot you saw there the, the sequence there where you know people are just going up and down for it they get in the offensive rebound gets fouled on the way up incredible so really all that matters was the win it was sloppy it was ugly but it goes down as a w uh, let's throw up the uh, the women's standings for me guys there because that one meant quite a bit Troy, Troy and uh, Coastal still kind of running away with this one. Little Rock also really up in there. It's really crazy to see how that team has gotten better as well. And you see the, the record there for the Lady Trojans, 9-11, 7-2 in Sunbelt play. So it took them a little while to get going, but Joe Foley has got that team motoring right now. Raging Cajun sitting there at 6-3. Texas Arlington also 6-3. Arkansas State also at 6-3. As they are, uh, I guess, technically the sixth seed right now. We're just kind of sorting them by overall record. And then I'm not sure what technically the seedings are. But uh, we'll go with that for now. South Alabama, 5-4. and four. That's a team that's really been good the past few years on the women's side of things. But struggling a lot this year. And then uh, the bottom kind of drops out. And we've kind of been telling you guys as the year goes on about sort of this obvious divide. And I would almost probably put it at Arkansas State and then everybody down is kind of, ugh, you don't really know what you're gonna get, but South Al obviously sort of still in this thing, sitting at five and four, so they've got a chance to really jump around still, but I think everybody after that ugh, is, is gonna be kind of your bottom of the barrel. You see App State, Georgia Southern there at three and six, and then Georgia State at one and eight. Also ULM all at one and eight in conference play. And then how about the Bobcats? I know I've been giving them a hard time this year, but they finally get themselves a conference win this past week. And they are now one and eight in this thing. That, that team has been also in enigma, kind of the opposite effect of Little Rock and Arkansas State. Texas State really started well. You kind of do the math on their record. And yeah, it, it, they've been a bit of an enigma uh, for this one. So there you go. But uh, this women's conference, you really kind of Starting to see who's who. Uh, I think your top three teams are, are going to be your, probably your ones to watch. Coastal Troy and Little Rock. And then you kind of got that middle tier of everybody jumbled up there at six and three. I think those are ones that could make some noise. Maybe one of those teams makes a little bit of a run. Arkansas State capable. I don't think they're there yet myself just because there's not enough of a scoring punch for them. They they. It's kind of like with the men's team. It's like you, you kind of see some Jekyll and Hyde with them, and, and it's been interesting. But it's been interesting to see how they can grind those games out. You see that game against Louisiana Monroe. They were down 11 at one point in this one, 11. And in the women's game, it's a little different just because it's not as up and down, and, and the quarters kind of, you know, change the dynamics of the game. It, that's a lot of times it's fairly insurmountable, but early enough, 
And they finally buckled down on the defensive end, got the win. And that's all that really mattered there. So they grinded one out there against uh, an inferior opponent on the road. And those are always tough. And you kind of saw the arena a little empty, too. So sometimes you got to bring your own juice for that one. Uh, but again, women get their win on the week. They've got the Georgia mashup this week. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what that looks like. Both those teams, not great, really could use uh, a 2-0 type of week. In this one, Georgia State, one of those teams, you know, we saw the standings, they're just not very good. Southern kind of in that same boat. They're in that bottom tier of uh, probably not going to be having great years. So uh, on the road for both of these games, so these are, these are also going to be kind of key. We saw them struggle against Monroe on the road. You're going to probably see a lot of the same type of atmosphere in those Georgia games as well. You're probably not going to have big crowds. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things. So you've got to be able to bring your own hype, bring your own juice, and I think the ladies will do that. I think they go 2-0 and on the week, 2-0. and And that's, that would be huge going forward. That's going to be huge, especially, again, you kind of see the divide. We're going to start talking about seedings and things like that because we're starting to come up on it. We're into February now. March is it's really not that far away if you really think about it. If you go through and you look at the, the schedules, we're talking about you've got this coming week, two weeks. You've got about three weeks left, three and a half. Yeah. Got to start making some moves. So uh, the ladies are, are looking pretty good to make a nice significant jump in the standings this coming week. Men could really make a dent into some things too as well. Again, only one game this week for the, for the men. They're playing Little Rock. Women are on the road. So everybody's out and about here. All right. So uh, we're going to really get into some, some potential seedings next week. We're going to bring in some of our friends. Hopefully everybody was busy this week. You know, it happens. Plus, it wasn't the greatest of weeks uh, for really either team, even though, like I said, the, the women came out with the win in this one. So uh, plus two, uh, it, it's almost that time for uh, signing day. We're going to maybe break down some of the, uh, the signees that have come on. Arkansas State's really been picking up some commits here as of late. So we'll really get into some of that stuff. Uh, next week as we uh, we set to, for signing day and all that fun stuff here. But uh, for now, that's going to do it for us here in the den. Again, men, Little Rock, Arkansas State women, Georgia Southern, Georgia State. You got a potential there for a big time 3-0 week for everybody here. So uh, make sure if you're in town around the Little Rock, Central Arkansas area, you get out to that game. It's going to be electric atmosphere. Uh, so I will definitely see you guys there. And I will see you here again next week on the Wolves Den.